Welcome to today's webinar where we are going to discuss filming a VR training scenario. And I'm not going to do this myself. We have here as a guest Denny De Bruyne, also founder of Warp VR, but especially interesting because he has lots of experience with video production. Since even before Warp already interested and experienced in 360 video, and by now filmed over 150 VR training scenarios. Together today, we're gonna to discuss all the different steps required in order to film a VR training, what is required, and especially the tips and tricks on how to do it. So let's dive in. Hi, Danny, welcome. Great to do this. I've got you know many questions for you. Some may be difficult, but pretty sure you can share your experience regarding filming. So great. Please just start by sharing your experience, kind of what did you do in terms of filming and uh, just for the audience to get to know you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the introduction. So I think I started more than 10 years ago with my own video production company. And as someone who starts in that, you do all kinds of things. So commercials, weddings, after movies, just a lot lot of videos. But what we at some point really interested was grabbing someone's attention, make people emotionally involved in what I made in my in my video. So um, especially doing weddings, that was, was very cool to really spark that emotion of people. And at some point, our other co-founder, Guido, uh, called me and he said, I, I, I found something and it's 360 degree video. And this is, this is some really cool tech, so maybe you should dive into it. And I did. And I think, I think this is already eight years ago or something. So we uh, printed our, our own 3D rig and we, we filmed with GoPros. It was quite challenging to get it working that time. But now after eight years, lots have changed and the technology is going very far. Now it's not that difficult anymore. And I, I, I even believe that it's as easy as filming with your mobile phone with the cameras that are now available. So um, I love to uh, to share my thoughts and experience with uh, with all of you, I would say. That's that's great. And and indeed, if you say it's as easy as with your mobile phone, I think the uh, the audience is very interested in how does it work? Where do you have to pay attention to? And, you know, which, which gear do you need? So let's dive in all these different steps of filming a VR training. What's the first step? I mean, that's, I guess, the first question. So uh, let, let's just dive in there directly. What's, what's the first step? Like you have the script, you have the scenario, you know what you need to go, you need to film. What's the first step? Yeah, but before we uh, start there, first let's talk gear because you need your filming gear to, uh, to get started filming. You don't need that much. So you need, of course, the 360 degree camera you have them in all kinds of uh, shapes and uh, and sizes, but the the most common one now I think is the more prosumer camera. I would say the price is around four or five hundred ish euros. It's a camera that that has two lenses, each on both sides. That's the first thing you need. Of course, you need some extra equipment with it, so maybe uh, some extra batteries if you are planning on filming a full day. Uh, you need a um, SD card, so you need memory. When when you have that, then you need a tripod or a monopod. So we most often use microphone stands. Why? Because it has a very small footprint. It's easy to transport. It, it's easy to set up. Those cameras, the, the prosumer cameras, are so light that it's perfect. Otherwise, when you have a big tripod stand, maybe the footprint get a bit large yep. for the camera itself. And also the place where you attach the 360 camera to su such a tripod, really film tripod, is also quite large. I see. So um, so you might be able to see that after you're filming when you're in the VR scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So different solutions when you have the mono slash tripod. We also advise our, our clients to get a microphone system, a wireless microphone system, preferably one that has one receiver that you attach to the camera and then one transmitter, so two microphones. So that way you can have two actors in the same scene saying something and record it on camera itself. I see. And I think that's that's the most important stuff that you need. When okay. you have that, I think you're ready to, to go. Okay, can you just name a few brands of the cameras that, that are out there and which are the prosumer versions? The biggest one, and with biggest, I mean the one that produced uh, the most different cameras is Insta360. 
I think almost every year they come out with with a new cameras. Have, they have some different lines uh, of cameras. Uh, next to that, you have Kandao. You have GoPro also. I'm, to be honest, I'm not really a big fan of, of them on the quality of the cameras. And I think those those are kind of the big brands. But I would say go for Insta360 or go for Kandao. Okay. Easy to operate. Yeah, and I, I guess we can we can share maybe a couple of URLs or at least a link with you know this this gear set uh, underneath the video so people can actually check it out. Yeah, we have a database with different cameras, the differences between the cameras, so we can we can share that. Yes, terrific, terrific. That will be helpful, I'm sure. Okay, so you have the gear. Say you go to a location, you know, where you need to film. What's next? Let, let's. How do you set up the gear? Yeah, again, maybe one step before I, I would say. Always check your gear at home when you have the time, when there is no rush or time pressure. Just build it up yourself, play around, maybe film some stuff, test the microphone, where to where to place it, uh, test maybe the distance where you want the actor in front of the camera, test it for yourself. We say aim at one to one and a half meters, that's nice, and it depends a bit on the story. Do you want someone to be yeah. very close and intimate or maybe in, in your space, maybe someone is really angry or yeah. I don't know or maybe you want just a, a more easy conversation so you can play around with it but just test it yourself and then when you go to set I think everything that you need to know is in the script so on, on the story and what you need to film so in, in Warp Studio we have this great uh, scenario export feature so it's you know which scenes you need to uh, to film so that's easy right so we don't have to think about the story or what to film or how to film it the first thing is you have to to decide where you want to place the camera. Yeah. So normally we walk around through this building or this filming location, and then we say, okay, where are we going to need to place the camera, uh, and then find the right spot. And I think the two most important factors to find this spot is is sound and light. Yes. Because we don't make use of lights, we we try to use the natural light of the of the or maybe the the, the lights that are really there. Uh, you want you don't want it too dark because that can mess up the video quality. It can a bit get a bit grainy. We say um, as video makers, we say noise. You get yeah. noise in your video. It's that that grainy uh, look. And the sound you want to be able to hear the actor talking, right? So it doesn't have to be totally quiet. That's still that that's not, that's not important because we also like the feeling. It's 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 lively. It's things exactly. are happening because that also adds to the scenario, right? But you you still want to be able to hear the actor talking. So I think these are the most important two things to uh, to look at when you uh, on set. And I think maybe later on we can also talk a little bit about the actors because then you could focus a bit more on the actors. But just setting up your gear, choose the camera locations, and then um, I think you are uh, are ready to go. Perfect. Uh, okay, so that's that's indeed for for setting up uh, all the gear. So if what what if you would bump into to issues, let's say you know something's maybe not working, or what do you do? Like how do you resolve these these issues? Yeah, yeah. So you need some uh, problem solving uh, skills on set. No, no. To be honest, jokes aside, I think there are two uh, two problems or challenges that could occur on on the film set. And one is uh, the technology that doesn't seem to work. And the other thing is that just things happen on set or film location that you didn't expect it. So maybe you you wanted oh, to film, sorry? Overheating maybe, yes, that, could, that could be a common issue I can, can imagine. Yeah, I can, we, we didn't come across, especially with these cameras, we didn't really come across that. But then the only solution when overheating is waiting. Cooling. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, um, we film with a bigger camera and then we take out the battery as well just to have it cooling down and we just take a break for five or ten minutes and then continue. But the other two, so what I mean with things that could happen on set, maybe you planned to film at uh, at, um, at a certain location in a room and the room is booked or other people are there or maybe you went there before and, and now on the film day they are working outside on yeah. the building so there's a lot of noise and sound so these things always no, always could happen and, and fix for this for both things or so the technical technical side maybe the camera isn't working or you try to connect to your phone to see what the camera is filming but 
you cannot, it doesn't seem to work. Then the old fashioned reset, just turn it off, turn it on again. That seems to work always. Okay. That's the that's the best solution. Yeah, yeah. Maybe bring some spare parts could also be. So maybe not have one memory card, but also bring two. Not have one battery, but always bring two. So you have a kind of backup. And on the side of um, being prepared for the film location is the pre-production. So be ready. Maybe you've been to the location already, have a look around already and have things written down. So also if you know, okay, we need to film at the reception, think beforehand, okay, what's the right time to film them? What are busy moments at the at the reception and whatnot? So you can take that into account. And also when you create the schedule filming, you can take that into yeah. account. You know, okay, we don't want to film the reception at nine o'clock or eight o'clock because exactly probably this busy, or maybe you want to film the elevator, then also maybe eight, nine o'clock or 12 o'clock-ish. Yeah, are not the best moments to film at those places because then you have lots of other people being there. Yeah, so there's there's obviously no need to film, let's say, in a chronological order. I mean, you 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 can decide, you know, whatever moment in the day fits best for whatever scene. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So I think we always try to film it chronologically, but not always. Uh, sometimes, when indeed is the example of the reception, then you need to uh, maybe change that little part but yeah. it's nice to film it that way because then um it's more easy to understand what you have filmed and whatnot yeah a different tip is what we always do is we use this this export from warp studio and we just write down we mark okay we have we have filmed this but we also mark down the amount of takes and what we think is the best take so normally we we mark that okay we filmed this seen twice or th- maybe three times and then we like this yeah. uh, the best and that can also help in the post-production so when you're ready with filming so so maybe also going back back a little bit to that filming location what about day and night or inside and outside like how do you take that into account i can imagine that that could be tricky yeah and especially with winter winter and and summertime um you have m- more or less daylight so indeed, those are things you need to take into account. So we all do that in the uh, pre-production phase. So you could say a production has three phases. The first phase is the pre-production, preparing everything for filming itself. Then you have the production itself, it's the filming day. Yeah. And then you have the post-production. So then you have to stitch and edit these, these videos out of the camera and make it into a VR training. And everything on the scheduling, when do we film what, what is needed, um, what do we need on set, who do we need on set. Those are things but you, what you do in the pre-production and also create a schedule. So you know exactly who is needed, where and when on that film. Yeah, yeah maybe actually good to, to talk about that a little bit. And you mentioned all the gear that's required on filming day. What about the crew? Like who is good to have on set in order to make kind of the production day uh, as smooth as possible? I think a, a film crew, especially when you have uh, these easy cameras that, or these cameras that are easy to operate, I think two, a film crew has two, two people, that, that's a good amount because then you have one that can be more technically focused. So yeah. that's the person, maybe it's the cameraman, decides where to place the camera, make sure it's turned on and recording when needed, maybe could fix any issues that occur and also decide uh, where to place the camera, where to place the microphone. So more the technical guy or lady. And then the other person could be more the director, more focused on, okay, what do we... And I would say more the, in, in film terms, we say director and producer maybe together. So director is, of course, responsible for the story and, and how it's filmed. Yeah. So you guide the actors, you you... Make sure everything is on on film as the script describes, and the producer is more focused on okay, the schedule. Are we on schedule or not? Do we need to need to make other decisions? Maybe uh, film a bit faster, maybe skip some things, or maybe because we are late, let's film the reception first because otherwise it gets too busy. Or these types of um, decisions. I think it's also nice to have that at one person. Yeah. Yeah, so actually just with two and then obviously you still have the actors and, and all the extras involved, but with two, you, you could actually already have that filming crew. Yeah, 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 exactly. All right. Yeah. And then when you become more professional, so maybe 
at some point uh, you want more microphones because you have a bigger set, then maybe you also look at recording your audio separately. So maybe you need a different recording device. At that moment, you could also think of maybe a separate person that's responsible for the audio. So you maybe you add yeah. with someone to your uh, crew. When it's a very large production, maybe you want to you want to split up director and the producer roles as well. It's also possible. Yeah. But I would say as a start and just for most of the scenarios that we see on our platform, I think a crew of two people is, is, is good enough. More than uh, yeah, that that's that's more than good enough. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Okay, so this this is all regarding let's say the gear. You know, you arrive on set. I think the next step then would be to kind of prepare the set, right? I mean, eventually we're talking 360 video here, so you know everything's going to be on there. Like, how does that work in in terms of preparation of the set? Yeah, so this is something also what you would take into account indeed when you are choosing the camera locations, because indeed the the, the uh, video films 360 degree around. So you need to make sure what's in the room. Maybe there's some sensitive information on the sides, on whiteboards, or I don't know. So we always tell, okay, if there's anything we want, we don't want to be on film, then let's remove that from the room. So we we are sure it's not yeah. on, on film. Okay, I see. I, I totally understand. You have to you know take things out of the set, which uh, you don't want to have on film. But what about yourself? I mean, as a crew? You don't want to be on film. No, and, and this is something I'm I'm getting really good at. Also with my kids, it's a game of hide and seek. No, jokes aside. Of course, also you have to look uh, when you choose your film location, uh, indeed of things that, are, that you want not to be on film, but also you need places to hide because there's no behind the camera anymore. So as a cameraman or director, you need to hide somewhere. So look for spots and you get very creative in this for spots where you can hide. So normally you have your phone connected to your camera so you can see what the camera sees and you can determine what the right camera location is. But now when you go hiding, because these the cameras make you use normally about of a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connections to connect with the phone and stream uh, live stream the video feed, you can lose that, especially when there's something in between what you want, because when you want to hide. Yeah, right? like a thick wall or something a like that. A car, a wall, uh, furniture. Uh, what will happen is you will lose connection to the camera with your phone. Don't worry, because the camera stays on filming. Okay. Keeps It keeps filming. And then when you walk back, probably it will reconnect or you can just stop the recording from the camera and then connect again and uh, go for the next take or next scene. But indeed, you need also to hide together. Yeah. I can imagine that that, that will also bring in fun moments when the scene is over, let's say, and everybody kind of, you know, crawls from their hiding spots. And, and I can imagine that that's very funny. It's really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can share some photos of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of our hide, of the best hiding yeah, spots. Hiding spots. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we we talked gear, we talked about set preparation. I think we need to talk actors, since you know most uh, scenarios created, you know, have actors involved. You know, these are story based VR training scenarios where people are involved. Where you know actors playing an aggressive passenger on a on a plane or on a train uh, could be customer service where there's a client coming in. Most of the time, these are are played by actors. Can you explain a little bit more about you know actors? Maybe how you prepare actors. Also, what's different for them? Because you know we're working three hundred and sixty video now, and it's different than you already mentioned. There is a behind the scenes, you know, in in traditional video. How is this for them? Yeah. So I, I it depends on who the actor is. So is it a professional or is it a more amateur uh, actor? So is it a colleague or is it a real actor that you maybe hire for, for on set? And it differs also on how you guide them as a director. So we'll let maybe start with the professional actor. Luckily, we, we see more and more actors now who have experience with being in a 360 degree video or being filmed by a 360 degree camera. So that's something that's changing that was very, way different in the, beginning. in the beginning. So when you direct professional actors, so these people, most of these people have a study, so they know how to act. They know they can remember the script well, they can play an emotion on, on cue. 
So you don't have to tell them how to act or how to maybe you want to um, show them what you have in mind. Most actors don't like this. I learned also the hard way. <laughs> uh, so it's more on explaining the, the feeling or, yeah. or what's important in the scene and then have have themselves decide how to play it and how to because it's their profession it's their their artists and they like to do it in their way yeah. and then you can guide them in that way so they need to know the, the the full story as well in order to be able to to kind of play that specific scene and, and play that specific emotion yeah yeah and because it's non-linear you, you need to guide them in that maybe so you say um, also with the camera you tell them beforehand we will be hiding so it's only you with the camera uh, and then play as yes, the camera is, is as a person. So that's an important thing. You look at the camera as a person. You that that's your your counter uh, player. player. Yeah. So because when a trainee puts on a VR headset, they stand where the camera is. They become the camera. So when the actor talks to the camera, they are talking to you, who will just put on the VR headset. So that's that's maybe uh, a thing you need to guide them in. Also where to stand because you don't want them to stand in a stitch line of the cameras. That's the place where the two lenses connect because you have two lenses on both sides. Yeah. And then in the middle, it's, a, it's the stitch line because um, also for video quality and stitching, you want them in front of one lens. So they can walk around, that's that's okay. But then when they stand still and talk to the camera, have them in better. Front. Yeah. Yeah. You, you point out that they need to look at the camera, play that, that it is a person, and then you need to guide them a bit in the non-linear part, where you say, okay, now we are here, now this, this, this is a wrong decision, the player chose this, so now you you uh, you react in this way, you are angry or sad, or yeah. because of this, this is, this is important for you, and then the actor can play it uh, themselves. So do, do you show kind of the, the flow diagram as well to, to the actor? Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe when people don't have experience with the 60 degree uh, video or a VR training, especially story-based VR training, yeah. I have them play a VR training as well. Ah, so play yeah. it yourself yeah. because they then they understand how it works, that, that there will be a question and answers yeah. and how the non-linear exactly. part works. And yeah, uh, so then back to the amateur or colleague that you ask. So these people really want and need guidance in how to act because yeah. they have no experience in this. Probably maybe a little bit, but so you need to guide them and maybe show them how you would like them to to play. Most often compared with, with learning how to drive a car. So when you first learn how to drive a car, you are very busy with controlling this vehicle, right? So you have to steer and you have the gearbox and it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. And next to that, you also have the traffic, right? And, and the traffic rules. And so it's a lot of different things you need to think of. It's it's a lot. And most nah, most of us know who have a driving license. You can compare this to someone who is acting for the first time because they have and the lines. They need to the script. They need to learn from their head. The most common question I get is, could I maybe play somewhere the I text? Know. Which is a no. No, right? no, I'm sorry. There's also no prompt possible, which which used by uh, news um, readers. Then they can look at the camera and, and read the script. At the same time, it's not possible with the 360 camera. So they need to learn it from, the, from their head. They have the, the script that they're focused on. It's the first time in front of the camera, so maybe some nerves. And then they also need to act. They need to play. They need to show an emotion, play an emotion. Exactly, yeah. So that, that can be challenging. It can be overwhelming. So you need to guide them in that. Or maybe if you, you do it like this, or maybe if you emphasize this sentence or this word. So in that way, you can really show them how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine that that really helps them uh, in order to... to, to yeah, to, to play that emotion, because I can imagine that that could be difficult for them if they haven't done that before. Yeah, because they're just focused on other things. They're yeah. focused on the script. Yeah. They're focused on being in front of the camera. Exactly. Uh, how do I look? Yeah. Uh, how do I behave? Yeah, they uh, know that their their colleagues are eventually going to see him, you know, when they're playing the VR training. So it might also, might, 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 might affect that as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Right? So, um, therefore... Qu question, um, maybe going back a little bit to the gear, because with the actor, so let's say there's a there's a conversation between the player, so the camera and and the actor. Uh, you know, obviously you want it to feel real when you put on the VR headset and you're really in that scenario. 
So you talked already about the distance from the actor and the camera, but what about, let's say, the height of the, well, the microphone stand, so not the tripod, but the microphone stand, like, is where do you have to pay attention to? Yeah, so also when you choose this this microphone stand or tripod or a light stand, different things you can choose, but is the height uh, it can, uh, can go to, because um, uh, you want the camera to be on the eye level of the actor of the main actor in the story. So of course you are the player when you put on the headset, but the other person that's most in, in this scenario, you want the camera on that person's eye level because that's the most comfortable way to play a VR scenario because then when you look, look, look straight, you look the actor in the eyes. Yeah. You don't have to look up or down with the, maybe uh, with the headset. So um, that's why we, where we aim for. And then maybe you have a scenario without any actors could be that we just take an average average height of a, of a person. I think I'm quite average in in the Netherlands. I'm normally take my own height. You're really average. That's <laughs> <Yeah. it>. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. So that 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 definitely helps. That's uh, that's uh, that's good yeah. advice. And and then don't change the height anymore. Ah, yeah. During filming because you don't want people have the experience that they got taller and then shorter again and taller that that's a bit of a weird experience if you're not going for a weird experience then just keep the camera at the same height <laughs> same height okay. uh, we only tend to change this height when we have someone sitting down so when yep. you're at the table could be a part in a scenario where you need to sit down yeah yep. indeed yeah so then we we of course put it lower maybe I'm, I'm just thinking now what about you mean you mentioned before that you don't you don't want to have actors in the stitching line so if they stand still and they act they, they should not be in the stitching line um what about the movement of the camera so you've got different camera locations do you have to take that into account like how the camera is positioned you know you, you, i can imagine that if you're in a vr scenario yeah you, know, you want to look at let's say the same direction because that's that's kind of what feels the best yeah yeah so back in the days yes we really had to uh, take this into account, but now we have tools also in 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 Warp Studio where you can set the north. So uh, it's very easy when you uploaded the videos to Warp Studio, and you can enable this, and then there there will be a line that appears in the video, and you can determine where the trainee looks at when they start this video or this scene. So what's the part of the video because it's of course 360. So where What's the first thing that I see when I enter a, a scene? What part of the video is the first? Oh, it's called initial look direction, I think, in Warp Studio. And so you don't really have to mind that, where you where you position, uh, how you position the camera. Only the stitch line is something. Yeah, so you can, for each different scene or each camera location, you can position, you know, the, the optimal stitch line, let's say. So, you know, actors are not not kind of in place. Yeah, yeah so we, we tend, when we place the camera and it's not moving, so it's not going to a different camera location. Then we always say, just leave it. Okay. Don't touch the camera anymore because that's for the continuity. That's the best because if you just have a slight movement and, and then let's say in scene one, you have the camera here and in scene two, you have the camera over here. And then in scene one, I select one choice of the different choices. Then when I hit the, the answer. Yeah the video will change slightly. Yeah. Maybe not. It will feel weird. Yeah. 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 So when you have one camera position, leave it at this and then maybe change the position of the ca of the actors then say, okay, maybe you have to yeah. stand here. So you end up in front of the lens yeah. rather than moving the camera around. When you go to a different camera location in the same room, that's okay. Th then, then you don't have to take into account the orientation of uh, the rotation of the camera. I see. That's fine. I see. Cool. I think we, we already covered quite a bit from, from gear to set to actors. We might be ready to start filming. I think so. Good. <laughs> Maybe so, you're ready for filming. <laughs> Maybe, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. But let's say hit the record button. <laughs> um, run us through that, that process. Like what's, what's, you know, what's, what's needed, you know, just before starting, you know, to, to actually film that specific scene. Yeah. So we just go over the scene when there are actors with the actor. And, and we do what we call a dry run, which means that you play the scene as is, but without recording it. Because then you as a director can stand next to it and you can guide, you can guide the, uh, the actor or you can talk it through. Maybe you have some extras walking around and you can guide them as well. So you can really fine tune the performance of the actors. And then when you think it's okay, 
it's also easy to go and hide because you already rehearsed this, this scene. So that's the first thing, do the dry run. And also I think important, have the actor experience a 20 second loop. What's the loop? Your question. Yes. I know. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, I'm happy you are here, man. So the loop is when you have the video plays and at some point in the video, the, the question will pop up. Yep. And then players need some time to read the question, read the answers and think of what answer they want to select. So normally we don't like the video to pause because it's a story-based scenario. Normally there is a kind of... Um, um, tension arc, right? So you build up the tension with the story and then my personal taste, when the video pauses, I lose this tension yep. because the, the audio is away, the video stops. It's like you can step out of the moment and think. And that's the, I don't want That's that. really the, not what you want, indeed. Indeed. So we make use of the loop and the loop is a part of the video. So let's say the first 10 seconds is, is someone talking and then I have 20 seconds video extra that I can loop over and over again. And loop means that when the video ends, it starts at some point in the video again and plays from there. Yeah. And that's one part of the video that keeps on looping. With that, the audio keeps playing and maybe the actor says one, uh, repeats a question just to keep the tension yeah. high. For this, after the script on set, we always need to film 20, second, uh, 20 seconds extra. So this is something you need to take into account, but it can feel a bit awkward to play. So also when we do workshops, I have everyone experience this 20 seconds looking at the camera, don't have a script, but waiting. Oh, yeah. And it feels very, very long for everyone. Yeah. Everyone is relieved when I say, yeah, yeah. like, oh, Just wow. Like <laughs> yeah, really. So also have the actor experience. Explain why it is. Yeah. And what happens in this moment, they don't have to freeze. They can move around. Maybe it's even better, you know, yeah. Yeah, and, and indeed maybe repeat the question. So like, um, what should we do? Come on, man, what should we do? Just repeat it once more. That, that builds up, but also don't overdo it. So don't do it three, four times because then it becomes annoying when you're reading this, yeah. this question and answers. Yeah. Rehearse that as well once so they know and, and just tell them, don't don't mind the time. I, as a director, will tell you when to cut, when to stop. Yeah, so they need to keep on playing also this emotion. So indeed, you know, when it's kind of an aggressive passenger, you know, you also need those 20 seconds there. So they need to keep on, you know, building up that momentum and staying aggressive. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, and, and that's, that's really awkward for the first yeah. time. So that's... And I can something. imagine actors were, you know, not used to, you know, the 360 video, you know, as a medium in the first place, and then also need to do this, look in the camera, stay aggressive or whatever emotion. Yeah. 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 So this is something also you can guide them through yeah. and explain and, yeah. and, and rehearse once, at least once. Yeah. So then you did the dry run and then it's just, it's just the matter of filming. So you start the camera Yeah. when you have attached the receiver of the microphones to the camera. You don't have to do anything. We normally call out the scene a number and take number. So yeah. We see, we say, say uh, scene two, take two, and then we walk away because we need you to You do hide. it as, as a director. As a director, indeed. Yes, and this is just to make it more easy in post-production. You know which scene it is and take it is because um, you cannot change the file name in the camera or while filming. Okay. So that's why we record it on video. Don't worry, we can cut it this off in, in Warp Studio. Yes. So just for the post-production, making it more efficient. Then we hide. And then from our hiding spot, we say three, two, one, action. And then they start. Also, we we ask actors to wait three second, seconds after action because then they have a you can have a clean cut. Otherwise, you, whore, you, you will hear me saying action. And then... The last bit, yeah, yeah. They already, especially with amateurs, they're like... They're very... The start, oh. Yeah, they're on the start blocks, right? So they, they really are um, enthusiastic and, and um, hyped up to, to, to go, they, they think, okay, I know my script, I know my script, I know my script. And then when you say three, two, one action, they, <laughs> they, poof, yeah. they go a bit too fast. So yeah. you always tell them, okay, take three seconds after action. Yeah. Just take a deep breath and then, you know. <laughs> take your time. Yeah, yeah take yeah. your time. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. And then when the, the script is done, you film this 20 seconds extra, and then you say, cut, 
and then you do it one more time because we always do scenes twice just to have a backup okay so so what about so uh, what about you know actors who you know remember their lines they did it well but you're just not very happy with the emotion maybe they played is this that something you hear or also look on your phone because it shows the live feed of the camera like how do you know if the scene is actually performed the way you like it? Good question. And and with the easy equipment, it's 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 great because it's easy, but it's also a bit difficult to hear and see what you're recording. As I said, probably when you go to hide, you will lose connection with your phone because there are things in between interfering the connection, so you will lose it. Maybe you can hear it. We also did sometimes we. I played an extra right. in the scene so I could be there and listen. But otherwise, it's really making use of the dry run, rehearsing, and then when it's okay for a couple of times, you film it. Yeah, you should do multiple dry runs even, you know, if you feel like, okay, we need to practice a little bit more often. Yeah, yeah. So when you go more to the professional side, then maybe you have a separate audio recorder and then you can hear what the, what the, what the microphones pick up so you can listen. And when you go to a little bit more expensive cameras, then you also have a live feed that can go through walls. So you can see live what the camera is filming. Yeah. But then you also need more skills in editing. So I would say that's maybe too, for most people, a bit too difficult. So stay with this, just make use of the dry run. Yeah. And then you're good. And also when you just record it twice, you're also good because then you always have a backup. It's, it's for technical uh, um, issues that could occur. Maybe a file get corrupt. These things happen sometimes. And most of the time you have no clue why, but it happens. I think we had it once in this, I don't know, six six years or so. One one time it happens to us. Okay, so it doesn't happen too much. Yeah. No, no, no. But just to be sure, film it at least twice. Yep. And then when you have two good takes, you can continue to the next scene. When you have one... Not not what one one take is not that good. Maybe do it one more time. So okay. you have good two good takes. And I think you mentioned before as well, in, in writing down on the script, whatever take you already think at that stage is is the best one. Uh, so you probably start using that in terms of post production and seeing you know this is probably the best one. I don't even need to look at the other ones. Yeah, is that correct. Yeah, indeed. So we we mark. So we just put lines on the on the on the export of the scenario on on the amount of takes, and then we just draw a circle around the the, the line that uh, is the best take yeah and then in well in post production of course we do every we put everything on on the computer on the hard disk and then we, we there's a stitch process we can talk about it in a bit uh, and then indeed when you go to choose the right the, the the scenes that you want to use you know from the skip which scenes you want to use so and then that's just your starting point yeah and then maybe you see, oh, that wasn't the best scene because maybe something happens in the background or maybe the audio is is not that good or I don't know. Then you have the other backups to to use. But it's just your starting point. Okay. Maybe some 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 last tips you have for for you know starting filmmakers you know in this filming step. Like what are some other things you know you you can give right now for people you know that's that are starting. With, with filming with 360 video? I would say maybe the first thing is just just go, just do it, just start. Uh, because this is something you need to do and learn and get better in. And there's just one way and that it's get going. And and I think the rest is just what, what I already told you. Come prepared, have backups, do the dry run, film at least two scenes and then you are good. You will be, you will be good. All right, perfect. I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody is feeling quite confident right now in, 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 t- in order to do film. I mean, it seems very easy. I've seen it a couple of times already. I think it's uh, some really good advice. Yeah, so maybe one thing to add, because why it's so easy is that when you go to film traditional video, there are a lot of different settings you need to think yeah. of and framing and... and this like a get- close-up or a wide shot or... ISO, aperture, uh, shutter speed a lot of different settings you need to think of and with this 360 camera it just you 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 place it you you, you hit record and it goes yeah it's not you have, don't don't have to think about framing 
it's that's why I feel it's that easy to to maybe go. even easier. Yeah, I think so. I believe so. Yeah. So of course you could also pick your, your your mobile phone. Then also you don't have to think about these things. And that's why in the start I compared it to the mobile phone. Yeah. It just hit record and it records and you're good to go. I think this this kind of covers filming, and I think you know we can we can take it to to the last step. And you already talked about stitching and and some other topics, you know, the regarding post production. Walk us through through that that post production phase. Like, what do you need to do? What software do you need? Kind of help us a little bit in in that final stage. Yeah. So with every three sixty degree camera, um, it comes compared with with software, and it's a tool that you need to stitch. The video and that means that it's a camera that has at least two lenses and you could see it as two separate cameras in the same body so it films two separate videos and that needs to be glued together and that's what we call stitching you need a stitching tool and besides that especially when you record you uh, attach the uh, receiver for the microphones to the camera itself you don't need any any editing software. You can do everything. All the tools you need are in Warp Studio. So you can trim in Warp Studio. So you can cut off where you hear the actor say three to one action, but also where you hear the actor say or the director say cut. Yeah. That's the part you can cut off the video. You can determine uh, the initial look direction. So where where you start looking in the video. So these are you can decide where the loop uh, starts. So normally when I upload the videos to uh, to Warp Studio. I listen to the first part because then I hear this, the scene number and the take number. I change the file name and put it in. Easy peasy. Yeah. I trim the videos and then you go to the video editor and you place the interactive elements. It's as easy as that. So when you go want more microphones or you want to maybe monitor the audio and have a separate audio recorder, then you need editing software because you need to bake in this uh, audio source into the video. But that that's a different different story. I see. So all these cameras come with you know this stitching software. You can just use it out of the box, and it's actually really easy kind of to use that in order to create these uh, these videos. Indeed, all the tools are already there when you buy the six key camera. All right. Maybe here also kind of that 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 little bit of that same question uh, we just did in the, in the previous step with filming. What are the you know tips and tricks? Let's say. If, if you're doing this for the first time, so you bought a camera, the software is, is there, what do you need to do? So again, I, I think the biggest part is just do it. I, I truly believe it isn't that difficult. It, I think everyone can do this. It's as easy as just dragging your, your files from the camera to the stitcher. I think there are some buttons you can, some settings you can tweak. And uh, if you need any advice, we have uh, we have it. I think already in a blog post, they often update this tool. So maybe the look and feel, the UI will will change. So you could also always ask us on uh, on the, on the chat, and also on YouTube, you have lots of videos explaining how these things work. It's it's really easy, and then go to Warp Studio. That's also very easy. We have lots of articles in our help center, and if you really want us to help, we have great workshops to um, where we teach you everything on filming, on the pre-production, post-production. We share some templates that you could use. If you need any extra help, there are always the workshops. We have some great workshops. Ring us up, go to the chat, ask for this workshop. You will you will learn everything about pre-production, the filming, post-production. And we have some great templates as well for you to use. Terrific, and I think so. So let's also share some of the links in, t in terms of the gear, maybe some other materials, some blog posts. Uh, we share those links underneath this video as well, as uh, so you have direct access to that content. Uh, I could also imagine that people still have a question, maybe multiple questions. How can they reach you? On the chat on our website, you can also send me an email, Danny at warpvr.com. On LinkedIn, connect me. All good, all good. Terrific, terrific. <laughs> Thanks everyone for, for watching this webinar about filming a VR training, covered you know all the steps from gear to set to actors to filming to post-production. Danny gave some great tips and tricks, you know, very valuable insights on his experience when when filming these these VR trainings he already did. I can imagine if you have any other questions, feel free to contact him. 
at denny at warpvr.com. We're, we're super excited that you've uh, watched this webinar, that you've been with us um, in this show. Hopefully, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.